I originally came um, with my family in 1946 from London. I'm a Londoner. Um, we came down here after the war. Uh, um, the family wanted to try and do something different. And my father was in the amusement arcade business, and we came down to look at an arcade on Torquay Seafront, which didn't pan out, and they bought the Derwent Hotel. Having never done hotel or catering beforehand, said, well, how are we going to do this? And we said, well, how would we like to be treated on holiday? Bearing in mind, nobody had a holiday for six years. So it was a good start. Very difficult. And we opened in 1946, and it just grew and grew. My uncle Clifford Morell, my mother's brother, very clever man, he was the man that built the Torbay Leisure Hotels, really. And it's still being run now with my cousin, his son. Um, I joined the Household Cavalry Lifeguards in 1953. Um, in those days, you had to do national service for two years, which meant you signed on as a regular because of the long training with, on horses and all that. So I signed on for 21 years with the three-year option, a, a year in Windsor and two years in, in Knightsbridge in London. Well, while I was serving in London, and I used to go to the, what was then jazz clubs and skiffle clubs, rock and roll was just sort of coming in 1955. Um, Elvis, Gene Vincent, all those people, American. Um, there were no really English artists around, but there were up and coming people going to the Two Eyes Coffee Bar. The Two Eyes Coffee Bar is the birthplace of rock and roll in this country. Just a coffee bar in Soho, a basement, which used to get packed. And you had people there like Tommy Steele, Adam Faith, Cliff Fisher was appearing with his band The Shadows. Um, all these people screaming Lord Such, um, because it was the only place they could appear. Uh, and that's where I got the sort of taste of of music and rock and roll. I came home to Torquay in 1956 and I met up with Johnny Harris who had formed a band and those lads had been in the army and been in bands in the army and they just formed a sort of semi-rock and roll band uh, but they had nowhere to play and the only music you had in the bay was like youth clubs playing records and they were limited but the number of American records that were, were, were available so I said, right, okay, we're going to find somewhere. So I went out and found the co-op hall, which is behind Union Street. The only night they had available was a Tuesday, so I booked the Tuesday, and we advertised it. And I'd, I'd been organizing things in the army, so I'd been, I knew a bit about organizing. And um, we opened it, and it was a massive success. And then the Saturday became available, so we did the Saturday as well. So it became the Tuesday Rock Club and Saturday Jive Club. That went on really for about two years, and I started to do package shows with net, small names from London, like Lance Fortune and Michael Cox and that, and put these, and Screaming Lord Such, putting these package shows together and putting them on the Town Hall, Exeter Civic Hall, and halls in Plymouth. And that grew to, as the music scene opened, really opened, you know. And that grew to putting on big bands, you know, the Cream, the Kings, the Who, and it just went from that. So I had a complete um, what you call it, an empire of the Southwest of ballrooms, big and small, running dances. It just grew and grew. Just as a fun thing, really, and it grew into a business. But I could earn, earn more money in one night running a rock and roll dance than I could for working a whole week for the family. So I <laughs> chucked in the daytime job. I was married then and had children and um, took a little office and started up a business, you know.